Today's video will demonstrate how to design a program using a UML class diagram. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. Of all the different design languages we have, flowcharts, pseudocodes, structure charts, data flow diagrams, entity relationship diagrams, all these different tools, perhaps the most commonly used is the class diagram. Uh, this video will demonstrate how to use the class diagram to design a program that has many related classes. Our first problem, we want to create a class matching the following description. A financial chart is a graph consisting of a title, a chart legend, and the data of the chart. The data is a collection of individual transactions from a given account. So we're going to start with chart, and that's the, our beginning class. We don't know anything about it right now except for that. But we know it is a graph, so therefore it's derived from a graph. It consists of, in other words, it has the attributes of a title, a legend, and data. A title, a data, and legend. Now, what do we know about the title? It's probably a string. The legend, well, I don't know what it is yet. We'll learn about it later. But the data is a collection of individual transactions. So a transaction, and there's many of them. But because that's a special class, then I'm going to have a relation called a transaction. And how many of them? Be many. And I'm probably just going to have them by aggregation. In other words, I don't create or destroy it. I just have a reference to them. If I create a chart, I don't create a transaction clearly. If I destroy a chart, I do not destroy a transaction. And how many are there going to be? Many. And the transaction is from a given account. And once again, there's a relation between a transaction and account. And the transaction is going to reference account. If I destroy a transaction, I clearly do not destroy the account from which it's referenced. Therefore, it's by reference. I'm also going to have to clean up a little bit here. There's one more item to add. Notice a legend is going to have one legend. I don't know anything about the legend right now, so I'm going to have to leave it at that. Here's another example. A 3D flying game has three types of projectiles, a bullet, a dart, and a guided missile. Each has a position and a velocity. The bullet honors gravity and drops slightly with every frame. The dart flies straight, and the guided missile turns toward the desired target but blows up after 30 frames. Everyone renders differently, of course. So I'm going to create a bullet, which has a position of velocity and the drop. In other words, how much is impacted by gravity. I'm going to have the fire move and draw. I'm going to do the same thing with the dart. The dart has a position of velocity. I have the fire and the move and the draw. And then my missile has a position of velocity and the time to live, as well as a fire, a move, and a draw. Now, this is a rather naive implementation. I have noticed that each one of these three is related. And how are they related? Well, they're types of projectiles. They have the same position and velocity. They have the same fire and move, and they all have a unique draw. And so from this, we can say the projectile is the base class. Position and velocity are going to be my shared attributes. And my fire, move, and draw are all going to be virtual functions. This is example 3.0.3, 3.0.4 in the class diagram 2 chapter of the software design textbook.